Hi, this is Story Wilson again, and I'm going to show you how to use the EAS Unlock software. And the first step is to uh, turn the key ignition to the second position, and this should turn on the radio and the HVAC. There's the second position. And here we've moved over to the footwell of the rover, where the OBD2 port is. And here's the uh, EAS serial cable that I've made. Um, and this is the one that I make, and uh, if you purchase one for me, this is what it'll look like. It's a 10 foot long cable, a uh, molded connector, and this is a, you know, just a standard uh, DB9 female connector. So, go ahead and plug this in, and we'll take it to the, to the computer. Well, here's my old uh, Dell laptop. It's, gosh, probably five, six years old at this point. But the important point is, is that it has a serial port connector on the back. This is a serial port connector. If you don't have one, um, you can use one of these. And these are roughly 10 to 15 US dollars. It's a USB port on one side and a serial port connector on the other. This just emulates a serial port for you through a USB. You can just plug this in and uh, then you'd plug this into the cable like normal. So, but for this instance, we're going to use our built-in serial port, and we're simply just going to plug in the EAS serial cable, and that's it. What you're looking at right now is the desktop on the Windows PC, and I'm recording our session. And uh, we're running the EAS faults application, which allows us to read the uh, stored faults. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually choose the COM port that we're going to be using, which is COM port 4 in this instance. And typically when we start up the application, you get a COM port error. And that's normal. It's set up by default to use COM port 1, but if you're not, it's going to throw an error, and you just simply select it through the menu here. First thing we do is initialize. Initialization, this is sending out commands, and we're getting a response, and now we're going to power cycle it. We're coming back, and we're idling properly. You'll see FF1 being sent, and FF in the receive buffer. And that's what we want to see. We want to see FF in the receive buffer. If you see anything other than FF, typically you'll see a 28 or an 80 in, a, in, the, in the receive buffer. That means that the synchronization has failed. And you'll need to stop and unplug the system, restart the application, and try again. If you still get 28 and 80, you might try changing this idle delay to be a little quicker. So let's go ahead and read the faults. And we're going to get some interesting faults because we're actually running this on my bench in my basement. We're not in the car right now. So this is what you'd expect. Since no uh, sensors are connected to this EAS unit, which, like, like I said, we're just running in my basement outside the car, and you know, we're plugged into it, we're getting signal errors. And that's what you'd expect because nothing's plugged in. Um, if you get any uh, values of 255 in here, uh, that's an error. Uh, what that means is this FF value has kind of slipped in and accidentally been read as one of the as one of the faults. Um, that's not what you want. If you get a 255 in here, go ahead and clear out the faults buffer and read again. So now <clears throat> you'll notice some new features down here: depressurized tank and depressurized springs. Um, this is uh, in the unique instance that you want to do work on your air springs or the high pressure tank and, the, and, and if it's useful to be able to depressurize the system so that when you're working with it and you unplug the lines, you know, the, the, the air lines, you don't just get a huge face full of pressurized air. In order to do this, uh, you click the I understand key and you click on what you want to do, depressurize tank or depressurize spring and each operation takes a certain time period uh, and when you begin that it locks out the any other operations you can do so you have to wait patiently so, because it's important for you to wait patiently because it'll depressurize the tank, it'll open up valves, you need to wait for that air to actually clear, and it'll close those valves. So you have to complete the operation, otherwise you're going to be stuck with solenoid valves that are just left open. So you have to wait patiently for the operation to complete. We're not going to do that right now. And of course the final thing is once you've read the faults, you can go ahead and unlock the EAS. And that's just simply click the button and you're done. Once you're finished, hit stop. You can clear the buffers, tidy things up, doesn't really matter. And then go ahead and unplug your cables. And it's as simple as that. 